Welcome, Bronco Nation, to my three keys to the game versus Wyoming. The game is going to be on Saturday at 4 p.m. Mountain Time on CBS Sports Network. Boise State's currently sitting at 4-1. and one. Wyoming's currently sitting at 2-3. and three. And Boise State is favored in this matchup 11 point by 11.5 points. I know all of us are very excited to finally have some Boise State football back. It's been too long. This will be three weeks now, coming up on the third week, that we haven't had any Boise State football to watch. There's been some exciting top 25 matchups. There's been some crazy... Uh, Crazy upsets over the last couple of weeks, but Boise State hasn't got to be a part of any of them. It's been a very down couple of weeks, but it, Coach Harson is very confident that Boise State is going to play. Uh, hopefully that holds out. And of course, with the first cancellation, we found out a couple of hours or three hours before kickoff time that the game wasn't going to be played. Hopefully that is not the case right now. Knock on wood, cross our fingers, whatever we need to do. Boise State, kiss the turf. There we go. <laughs> Whatever we need to do, hopefully Boise State is playing this Saturday, and it's going to be an exciting time, final regular season matchup going into the Mountain West Championship game next weekend. So, these are my three keys to the game. We're going to give three keys to the game. We're also going to give kind of a summary of their overall matchup and a score prediction. So, key one, take it slow and shake off the rust. Boise State has not played for three weeks. That is a big deal. You'd think that it'd be extra time to practice, but there is something about practicing versus playing in a game. Uh, when I was in high school, we had a four-week break. It was crazy how our schedule worked out. We played eight games, but we still had a four-week break in between playing right in the middle of our season. It was really weird. Um, and I can tell you, coming back from those four-week breaks, having to go back in and then play after not having played for four weeks, uh, it was it was crazy what you start to kind of settle into when you've had a long off season. The coaches can only do so much, not off season, but sorry, uh, bye week, long time between games. Coaches can only do so much to try and keep the competitive atmosphere up, to try and keep that intensity, but nothing beats having to play four quarters of a football team football game where you're on television and having to uh, play it out down to the final stretch against a team that's out there to beat you and motivated to win. So Boise State is coming. Coming off a very long break, so they're going to want to lean on the ground game and focus on the short passing game. Really want to install confidence in Rippon coming back from three weeks of not having thrown the ball around uh, competitively uh, against another team. They're going to want to, just like when he came back uh, from not having played since the Utah State game, similar time frame, they're going to want to take it easy, get him back into it, which is a real shame because he was just getting into his tempo again. It's like every year so far that he's played for us, he's either gotten injured or there's been a break or something right when he's getting into the pitch. I don't think we have yet to see the full capabilities what Rippon is able to do, which is extremely dangerous prospect for opposing teams because he's already an incredible quarterback even when he's having an off day. So Boise State has, we should have very excited for Rippon. I think he'll get back into the flow quickly, but he'll only do that if he's given the chance to get on phase, on the same page, sorry, with his receivers. And that only comes from leaning on the ground game. Hopefully we'll have Kalani back. No official word on that. Uh, I know that some projections were looking at it being a few weeks. Um, I don't know. It's been three weeks now. Uh, so we may have him back. Who knows? Uh, but Van Buren showed great uh, ability against Hawaii. He showed an excellent speed and burst. So if Palani isn't able to be out there, I think Van Buren is starting to come into his uh, abilities as a running back. I think he'll sub in nicely for Halani. Hopefully Halani's back. Anyhow, lean on the green out ground game, focus on the short passing game, and build confidence for Rippon. That's going to be key one. Take it slow, shake off Russ. Key two, make Wyoming one-dimensional. Wyoming is averaging 247 yards on the ground per game. They have th uh, two running backs who run it capably, uh, all, both averaging over five yards per carry. Walladay with 491 yards and four touchdowns, and Smith with 446 yards and five touchdowns. What might be most dangerous, however, is their goal line package with their quarterback, Williams. He's rushed it 46 times for 110 yards. He's averaging less than three yards per carry, but he has six touchdowns on the ground. However, when Wyoming is forced to pass... They are 56 of 106, 56, 406, so 52.8% of their passes completing for 832 yards and one touchdown and three interceptions. When, Boy when Wyoming is forced to put it in the air, they are not accurate and they turn the ball over. Now, Boise State only has two interceptions, so this might be a big game to, in to build on that and to uh, increase that overall amount total going into the Mountain West Championship game, build some momentum going into next season defensively.
This is going to be a big opportunity for Boise State. If they can stop the run, make my, well, I mean, one dimensional, it's going to be a long game for the Cowboy offense there. And Boise State Broncos should be able to buck the Cowboys and have a good game. So that's going to be second is make Wyoming one dimensional. Third key, don't let up in the second half. Yes, this has been a key over the last three weeks because, and I really should have been key all season because Boise State has not yet fulfilled this key, partially because they haven't played, but also because it's something they struggled throughout the season. Boise State is playing lights out defense in the first half. They are averaging, giving up only 8.6 points, sorry, 8.6 points uh, in the first half for all the games that they've played, including the BYU game. And the end of that first half was 16 to 6. It was close. I, I'm sorry. I'm drawing a complete brain blank. I know they only allowed 16 points for BYU. I apologize for not having the exact number there. I, my head escaped me right there. Anyhow, the Boise State's defense is playing lights out in the first half, and that's because this is really an actually talented defense. It really is. They have a lot of natural skills and abilities. However, without that full offseason to work together in spring and full spring practices and full fall camp, they never were able to really get on the same page page and develop the defensive timing and all of the skill, all of the knowledge and the know-how. So they're being easily outplayed in the second half. Offenses are doing a good job of adjusting to what the defense is getting in the first half. And Boise State is giving up 20.8 points in the second half throughout its games. We saw that big against BYU, of course. Um, and we even saw it against Hawaii, where Boise State was up 33-9 to midway through the third quarter and ended up only winning that game by 8 points, 40-32. to 33 to 9 midway through the third, and they only win by eight points. That should have been a blowout. That should have been a chance for Boise State to maybe say, hey, we potentially deserve to be in the top 25. And it wasn't that uh, wasn't that statement win that Boise State could have gotten because the defense led up the second half. Uh, they're not there, they're not very deep in a lot of positions, which is an issue. And I think that their coaching, I'm not necessarily blaming it on the defensive coordinator so much. I'm more blaming it, I think, on the coaching that was able to be given to the players to really be able to have a deep playbook, which I, I just don't don't think is well flushed out right now. Um, they've had three weeks to work on it, so this could be a revived defense. It'd be great for Boise State fans because the offense and special teams have played great this whole season. The defense has been the one missing element for Boise State, something they're definitely going to want to fix against the San Jose State team in the Mountain Championship. Whoever they end up playing a bowl game, if they get if the bowl games end up happening, and definitely going forward into next year. So the three keys are going to be take it slow, shake off the rust, make Wyoming one-dimensional, and don't let up in the second half. All right, so looking at Wyoming here overall, uh, this is not a very good Wyoming team. Not the Wyoming team, of course, that beat Boise State a few years ago, and not even the Wyoming team from last year. This Wyoming team having a down season. They did take Nevada, who's six and one to overtime, but they have also lost. They lost that game, but they have also lost to um, uh, Colorado State University and New Mexico. They lost last week, sixteen to seventeen, and they uh, that was New Mexico's first win of the season. This is their so it's a Wyoming team that's coming up a stinger of a loss, really hurt. They may be coming up with a little bit of revenge. Um, I mean, Boise State, Wyoming sees it as, as a rivalry. We don't see it as a rivalry, I don't think. We've only beaten us one time, and I think that's more of a fluke, just like I don't see New Mexico as a rivalry. But I think Wyoming sees us as a rivalry. I mean, all Mountain West teams see us as a rivalry. We are the peak. We are the top team to take down. So they all want to come take a chunk out of us if they can. Uh, but Wyoming, they, I think that they feel... I mean, I've been watching some of... I've. Uh, college football Facebook pages and stuff like that. And Wyoming fans have been a little chippy, a little bit chirpy there, uh, especially early in the season. Uh, so we'll see if Boise State, uh, if Wyoming comes out with a little bit of chip on their shoulder. But again, this is a team that's only beaten Hawaii and UNLV. They did beat Hawaii convincingly, more convincing than Boise State, 39-7 to or something like that. Um, they only let Hawaii have one score. It was a nice, pretty nice win there. And they beat UNLV, but they, it is a team that lost to New Mexico. Boise State is not getting a lot of love in this matchup. They are favored by 11.5, but I think that's a little bit insulting for the caliber of the Boise State team that this is. Boise State is an excellent football team this year, even if their defense is a weaker element. The offense is really, really good. The special teams is really, really good. Great turnaround from uh, two years ago, for sure, special teams there. Their Boise State is a really, really good football team, and the only time that they've lost a game is when their fourth-string quarterback and second-string running back were out there uh, taking the offensive helm. Would uh, I think that if Boise State had at least had Sears for the whole game or Bachmeyer, I think that Boise State would have won that game. When, Bach, when Boise State has had one of those two quarterbacks out there, they have scored over 40 points in every single matchup that they've played. This is a very, very, very dangerous Boise State team, especially now coming up three weeks where they might have a lot more of their team back. Hopefully, it's still unclear who's going to be on those COVID protocols. So 
uh, uncertain there, but they're going to have enough to their team back to play, it looks like, and should have some of those players back from injury. It'd be very exciting. So I think Boise State's going to win this big. ESPN is only predicting that Boise State scores 28.8 to uh, Wyoming 18.7. I think it's going to be a lot better than that. I think Boise State's going to score 45 points to Wyoming 24. You've heard me. 45 to 24 for a 21 point uh, margin of victory. Boise State really needs this big win. Yes, you can watch my other videos where I talk about Boise State's chances in the new six. It's not very good. I don't think Boise State's going to the new six. I say that right now. I know that rubs me even mentioning it rubs a lot of Boise State fans the wrong way. We've just given up on that from like as soon as we lost to BYU. Um, so I understand that. I don't think they're going to the New Year's Six right now, but Boise State still has a chance to end the season in the top 25. It'd be huge for them, especially going into next season. Hopefully they can end now with the top 25, keep their whole team going to next season, help them start off on a good footing uh, for the 2021 campaign. So Boise State needs a big statement win here. Uh, that would be like an overall key as a statement win, but obviously the individual key is the ones I've listed and 45-24 is my predicted score. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I know that these I've released a ton of videos in succession. I've had a really busy week. I'm sorry that these were all so close together, but thanks for watching my videos. And if you like them, make sure you like and subscribe. Got weekly content coming out at you. Uh, you can watch, check back through my channel to see all the different content that I release. Thank you so much. Make sure you join Bronco Nation Updates page. We have over 8,000 members and it's a great way to root on Boise State Broncos. Make sure you join before the game. We have a game feed chat on there uh, where you can root along and comment your frustrations, your excitements, uh, and any, uh, any other statements, comments, whatever you want to say um, in there during the game. So make sure you join Bronco Nation Updates page on Facebook. And as always, go Big Blue.